Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to be looking at how to export your song as either an mp3 or a WAV file, so let's jump in. Now in order to listen to your song outside of Logic, you're going to have to perform what's called a bounce. Now simply put, bouncing your song just means taking your song and creating an audio file for it, such as an mp3 file or a WAV file. Now the first step is to determine how much of the song we want to bounce. Is it going to be the entire song or just one section? So for that, we're going to use the cycle feature in Logic. So if we go up here, you'll notice this little grayed out part up here. I can just click directly in that, and that's going to activate the cycle range. Or I can just simply press the letter C on my keyboard, and that turns that on and off. Or you also have the icon up here that you can also click on and off. So the cycle range, when you're working in Logic, this activates a loop, basically. So it'll just keep looping the section that you have applied to the cycle. So this two bars in this case. But when it comes to bouncing, the cycle range will determine which part of the song is going to get bounced. So if you only want the first half of your song bounced, you can apply that cycle range. Or if you want the entire song, well, then you'll want to make sure that you have your entire song selected. Now, one thing to note is if I zoom in at the end of my song here, you generally want to leave your cycle range a little bit longer than the end of your region. Because if I just go to the end here, a lot of the times I'll have some reverb on the end of a note, and the reverb tail will actually continue past from where my region actually ends. So for that, I'm just going to leave this a little bit long. And usually what I'll do, I'll just turn the cycle range off, I'll listen to the last few bars of my track, and then I'll determine where I'm going to end the cycle range. So right around there. So I'll just trim up my cycle range to where my reverb tails all end. And then now is when we can go to the bounce menu. So there's a few different ways to get to the bounce menu. You can either go to your master bus track, which in my case is right here, and just click this little button that says BNCE. Or you can go up to File, Bounce, Project or Section. And lastly, the hotkey is just Command B on your keyboard. And then you'll see this menu show up. And First here we have destination, and we have four different options. PCM, MP3, M4A, and burn to CD. And you'll see each time we click a different option that the window changes over here as well. These are different file types that we can choose. So PCM, here we have the option file format, either WAV, AIFF, or CAF. All three of these files are going to be high quality files. WAV is usually the most widely supported, so I'm going to go with WAV. Now for resolution, if you're going to be using this file for a CD or uploading this to streaming services, then generally you want to choose 16-bit. And for the same purposes, sample rate, you're going to want to set this to 44.1. For file type, we're going to leave this as interleave. And now for dithering, the general rule is if you're downsampling, then you want to apply dither. So let's say you were recording in 24-bit, but you're now going to bounce out at 16-bit, or bounce out an MP3 like we're going to do in a second, then you generally want to apply dithering. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose the first option. And then now we'll go over to MP3. So having both of these check marks allows me at the same time to create both a WAV file and an MP3 file. Now the MP3 file, this is going to be a lower quality file, but it's also going to be much smaller in size. So this is going to allow me to, let's say, email it to a friend so that they can check out the track that I wrote. So you've got your bit rate first, either mono or stereo. Generally speaking, we're going to be bouncing out in stereo. And now the bit rate refers to the quality. So the higher the number, the higher the quality. I would advise against going below 192. So anywhere from 192 to 320. And also just note, the higher the number you go, 
the larger your file size is going to be as well. Now we can keep use best encoding checkmarked and also filter out frequencies below 10 hertz. So this is just going to filter out really low frequencies that our speakers aren't going to reproduce anyways and we're not going to be able to hear. We'll leave stereo mode to joint stereo and then write ID3 tags. This just allows you to embed additional information into your MP3 file if you want. So if I click on that and go to ID3 settings, here I can list a song title, artists, track number, and so on and so on. And then this information would show up in iTunes, for example. And now here you just want to confirm that your start and end points are based off of our cycle range that we had set earlier. So it's going to start at bar one, beat one, which is correct, and it's going to end at bar 31. Here we can see, and then at beat three, which is correct. And now mode, you can either bounce in real time or offline. So bouncing in real time means it's actually going to play the song all the way through, and you're going to have to listen to the song in real time while it creates the bounce. And when it's set to offline, your computer will just do the processing in the background and it'll save the song much faster that way. Now, if by chance you're using any outboard gear to do mixing or maybe some external synths, in that case, you're going to want to select real time so that any external processing can happen during the bounce. Now, if you select this, this is going to tell Logic to make sure you don't clip off any reverb tails and such that happen at the very end of the song. So in the beginning of this video, you saw that I went and listened and made sure for myself that that didn't happen, but you can let Logic do that as well by simply clicking this check mark. Since I did it manually, I'm just going to leave this unchecked. And then lastly, we have normalize here. So what normalizing does is currently I have it off, so that's not going to affect my song at all. But if I were to set it to on, then what it's going to do is it's going to analyze my song for the loudest peak in the song volume wise. And if that loudest peak is below zero dB and it's not clipping, then what's going to happen is Logic is going to bring the volume of my entire song up proportionally to from that highest peak. So now where that highest peak is, that's going to go all the way up to zero and it's going to bring the volume of everything else up with it. So this can be helpful if you're in the beginning stages of your song and you haven't done any mastering yet and you just want to boost the level a little bit, the, then you can turn on normalizing. Now if you select overload protection only, Logic will analyze your song and if there's any peaks in your song that go above zero dB, which means you're overloading or clipping, then it'll bring down those peak so that you stay below zero dB. Generally speaking, I leave this to off and before bouncing out, I make sure that I'm not going into the red at all on my master out. And then I don't have to worry about overload protection and I don't have to worry about normalizing as well because I make sure I have a nice healthy level before bouncing out my track. Now, the last two options we have are just another file type. If you want to bounce out to MP4A, you can do that as well. Or if you want to bounce directly to a CD drive on your computer, you can do that as well right in the bounce stage. So once we have all our settings, simply hit OK, name your track, whatever you'd like, and hit Bounce. And now Logic will work its way through the bouncing process. And now that that's done, you'll see that we have both an MP3 file and a WAV file, and we can listen to those upload those, or send them to friends to listen to as well. So I hope that helps clear some things up for you. If you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, make sure to download my Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.